Hey everybody, Joe Brunsman here, back with another quick common misconception that I see uh, really from businesses across the country, and that is service providers and data breaches. Who pays the bills? Or put another way, who is actually legally responsible for those data breaches? Now, a lot of companies out there really end up surprised because they go, okay, yeah, maybe it was my data, my client's data that got breached, but it wasn't my fault. Uh, surely this is somebody else's problem. And as a famous comedian once said, please don't call me Shirley. Of course, Joe Brunsman, master's in cybersecurity law, author of two books on cyber insurance and cybersecurity law. And I provide cyber insurance to companies of varying sizes across the country. So let's get into it. Quick legal disclaimer, uh, this is not official insurance or legal advice. I'm not your insurance guy. I'm not your attorney. So please, this is for general information purposes only. Let's talk about why you should really even care about this question. So the first thing is, Really few, if any, companies actually have 100% control of their information from inception to destruction. So I have yet to come across a company uh, that has 100% control of their data over the entire lifespan of everything they're doing. So most likely you as well probably fall into that category. And of course, you might actually be responsible and paying for something that you, know, you didn't cause that problem or you didn't know that that problem existed, you didn't cause the breach, uh, this does tend to, uh, I would say, shock a lot of people when they learn this information. And they think it's, quite frankly, not fair, but we'll get into that. All right, to just kind of prove a point here, this is a first breach notice. Uh, just pull this up online, just to prove the point. All right, you'll see right here, this was uh, from payroll card processors, I believe. And you'll see in the highlights, an unauthorized third party gained access to a website hosted by one of our service partners and was able to access a whole bunch of different PII, including social security numbers, driver's license numbers, and card numbers. So of course, the parent company had to send out this breach notification letter, and of course, they then added credit monitoring as well. Now to prove that that wasn't just a fluke and a one-off, here's a second example for you. Uh, this is kind of an interesting case. Uh, this was actually a medical center that was hosting, or I'm sorry, uh, storing uh, records, health records, at a building that actually got hit by a tornado. And so, of course, the company, this medical center then sent out the breach notification letter as well as the credit monitoring. So you can see the relevant parts of that breach notification letter displayed on the screen for you. Now, what this really gets into is data holders versus data owners. And this is a common misconception here. So what would a data holder be? Well, that could be outsourced IT, your MSP, MSSPs, uh, SaaS provider, software as a service, a cloud provider. So for example, uh, you know, Dropbox, AWS, Microsoft Azure, et cetera. Who could be the data owner? Well, that could be your business. So if you're relying on these outside companies to store or process some of this sensitive information, you should be aware that you're probably on the hook if any breach occurs and you're, uh, you're on the hook for the costs. So let's look at the state law requirements real fast. I didn't go through all 50, that would make this a very long video and it would be quite repetitive. So here's Texas, and you'll see that any entity that does not own sensitive personal information shall notify the owner or license holder of the information of any breach of system security immediately discovering the breach. Coming up, here's New York, effectively says the exact same thing. Hey, the data holder has to notify the data owner of the breach. That's about as far as their liability goes there. And you'll see California as well, just kind of hitting three big states for you. Same exact thing. So what does this really mean? It just means that, hey, data holders, not really responsible for breach notification letters, credit monitoring, uh, the cost of your business to retain an attorney and all the other associated costs uh, that could arise there after a breach. It's really going to be on you, the actual data owner. So let's look at contract clauses because I know somebody out there is going, well, there's no way that they put this in their contracts or somehow you could negotiate around this because if it's not technically your fault, why are you supposed to pay for this? Well, this is one MSP uh, just pulled out some of the relevant information here, limitation of liability. So what this gets into in the first part is essentially saying, hey, if something bad happens, the actual damages will not exceed the total service fees actually paid by the provider for the calendar quarter immediately preceding the month in which a claim arises. So what they're getting at here is, hey, you know, a breach could occur at this MSP. 
of your client's data. If that happens, really the most you're going to get there is the actual service fee, service fees for the calendar immediately preceding uh, the month in which the claim arose. Now, a lot of you are going to be saying, hey, this is just simply not fair. How could this be the case? Well, there's a little more rationale to it, so it's not as bad as you necessarily think. So first of all, it spreads the monetary risk. I mean, can you imagine if uh, Amazon Web Services had to pay for every single breach that could potentially occur on their system? Uh, can you imagine if every MSP was liable for all the information that was hosted on their system? Essentially, what they're doing here is they're trying to encourage the free market. So when you spread that risk around, there's less concentrated risk in one, one specific industry, and that encourages other companies to then join that industry. So ultimately, yeah, you could be responsible for those costs, but you actually had the choice uh, to begin with, thanks to spreading this risk around to you know, go to an MSP, a SaaS provider, uh, cloud provider, et cetera. Now that's not to say there's not other causes of action. So there are a number of lawsuits out there where uh, clients of say MSPs, SaaS providers, cloud providers uh, have actually brought claims against those entities following a breach. But this is really to say that, hey, the cost of credit monitoring, breach notification letters, attorneys, et cetera, are going to be on you as the data owner. So what can we really kind of take away from this? What are the solutions, things I think you should, should consider moving forward? First of all, remember, you can outsource responsibility, but not accountability. So it's always going to be on you. You know, once again, I went through three of the state breach notification laws. Uh, last I checked, all 50 state and territory breach notification laws all say effectively the same thing saying it's on the data owner, not necessarily the data holder. So with that, focus on the security uh, controls and the credentials of any of these third parties you're gonna do business with. That's really kind of like your first line of defense. So that way you can actually kind of figure out, okay, yeah, maybe you know option B costs a little bit more, but we've got additional security there. So that could be very useful for you. Of course, check your own service agreements. I can't look over everybody's service agreement, but you can check your own. And I'd highly encourage everybody, I think this is often overlooked, but you know, bring in that privacy and cybersecurity law attorney when you're looking over these contracts or you're you know, signing contracts or renewing contracts. So that way you're not surprised by something that's inside of there that could come back and really you know, bite you in the, uh, in the wallet later on. And then finally, of course, have appropriate cyber insurance. Uh, generally speaking, cyber insurance will cover you if a third party provider um, is breached and it's holding your client data and now you're legally responsible for those costs. But make sure you check inside of your own cyber policy or you get an appropriate cyber policy. Um, there's about 200 different cyber policies out there. They're all different. So check your own. All right. With that, this is my email address. If you want to reach out, if you have additional questions, this is where you can find a copy of my book for free. And with that, stay safe.